Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Thursday, February 11th, 2021. What a privilege it is to be able to spend this time together with you in God's word, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We begin today by reading a portion of Psalm 147. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing to our God, for praise is pleasant and lovely. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers Israel's people. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. He gives the names to all of them. Our Lord is great, vast in power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord helps the oppressed, but brings the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Play the lyre to our God who covers the sky with clouds, prepares the rain for the earth, and causes grass to grow on the hills. He provides the animals with their food and the young ravens what they cry for. He is not impressed by the strength of a horse. He does not value the power of a warrior. The Lord values those who fear him, those who put their hope in his faithful love. It may seem as we read through the book of Job that Job is not offering us a whole lot of hope. It may seem rather depressing to continue to hear Job talk about his sufferings and to hear him express his very raw and deep emotions. And yet God has written, has had this book written for our good as well, because it shows us that God's people do sometimes go through suffering. God's people sometimes do feel very raw and difficult emotions. So if you are someone who has felt those emotions, someone who is feeling them right now, find comfort in the fact that you are not alone in that. And also see that all of this is leading up to the good that we know the Lord will bring from this, as we will see as we continue through the book of Job. We continue reading some words from Job in chapter 7. Isn't each person consigned to forced labor on earth? Are not his days like those of a hired worker? Like a slave, he longs for shade. Like a hired worker, he waits for his pay. So I have been made to inherit months of futility, and troubled nights have been assigned to me. When I lie down, I think, when will I get up? But the evening drags on endlessly, and I toss and turn until dawn. My flesh is clothed with maggots and encrusted with dirt. My skin forms scabs and then oozes. My days pass more swiftly than a weaver's shuttle, and they come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is but a breath. My eye will never again see anything good. The eye of anyone who looks on me will no longer see me. Your eyes will look for me, but I will be gone. As a cloud fades away and vanishes, so the one who goes down to Sheol will never rise again. He will never return to his house. His hometown will no longer remember him. Therefore, I will not restrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I the sea or a sea monster that you keep me under guard? When I say, my bed will comfort me and my couch will ease my complaint, then you frighten me with dreams and terrify me with visions, so that I prefer strangling, death rather than life in this body. I give up. I will not live forever. Leave me alone, for my days are a breath. What is a mere human that you think so highly of him and pay so much attention to him? You expect him every morning and put him to the test every moment. Will you ever look away from me or leave me alone long enough to swallow? If I have sinned, what have I done to you, watcher of humanity? Why have you made me your target so that I have become a burden to you? Why not forgive my sin and pardon my iniquity? For soon I will lie down in the grave. You will eagerly seek me, but I will be gone. As we ended our gospel reading yesterday, we saw Jesus traveling through Samaria. In fact, John tells us that Jesus had to travel through Samaria. Practically speaking, no one ever had to travel through Samaria. 
In fact, most people went out of their way not to travel through Samaria. But Jesus did have to travel through Samaria, not because that was the only path that he could take, but because there was someone that he wanted to meet and minister to. Today, we're going to see that person as Jesus speaks with the woman at the well at Samaria. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Give me a drink, Jesus said to her, because his disciples had gone into town to buy food. How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman, she asked him, for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, give me a drink, you would ask him and he would give you living water. Sir, said the woman, you don't even have a bucket and the well is deep. So where do you get this living water? You aren't greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and livestock. Jesus said, everyone who drinks from this water will get thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water that I will give him will never get thirsty again. In fact, the water I will give him will become a well of water springing up in him for eternal life. Sir, the woman said to him, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and come here to draw water. Go call your husband, he told her, and come back here. I don't have a husband, she answered. You have correctly said, I don't have a husband, Jesus said. For you've had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. Sir, the woman replied, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus told her, believe me, woman, an hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, because salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yes, the Father wants such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Jesus told her, I, the one speaking to you, am he. In our gospel, which we just read, Jesus talked about the living water that he wanted to give to the woman at the well at Sychar. Martin Luther, in our writing for today, is going to comment more on that fact that Jesus is the well of living water for us. But if we do want to boast, then let us boast that we receive from the fullness of Christ, that we are enlightened by him, attain forgiveness of sin, and become children of God through him. For this is the sum and substance of it all. Whoever wishes to be safeguarded from the devil's might and to escape sin and death must draw from this well, Christ. From him flows all salvation and eternal bliss. This fountain is inexhaustible. It is full of grace and truth before God. It never fails no matter how much we draw from it. Even if we all dip from it without stopping, it cannot be emptied, but it remains a perennial fount of all grace and truth, an unfathomable well, an eternal fountain. The more we draw from it, the more it gives. Such water, as St. John remarks later, wells up to eternal life. The sun is not dimmed and darkened by shining on so many people or by providing the entire world with its light and bright splendor. It retains its light intact. It loses nothing. It is immeasurable, perhaps able to illumine 10 more worlds. I suppose that 100,000 candles can be ignited from one light, and still this light will not lose any of its brilliance. Likewise, a learned man can educate a 1,000 scholars without forfeiting any of his own learning. The more he shares with others, the more he has himself. Thus Christ, our Lord, to whom we must flee and of whom we must ask all, is an interminable well, the chief source of all grace, truth, righteousness, wisdom, and life, without limit, measure, or end. 
Even if the whole world were to draw from this fountain enough grace and truth to transform all people into angels, still it would not lose as much as a drop. This fountain constantly overflows with sheer grace. Whoever wishes to enjoy Christ's grace, and no one is excluded, let him come and receive it from him. You will never drain this fountain of living water. It will never run dry. You will all, all draw from it much more than enough, and yet it will remain a perennial well. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love, teach me ever to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove. And we pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have called your church to worship your Son in spirit and truth. Through the Spirit of Jesus, keep us faithful to the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, so that we may be partakers of his divine life and inherit the kingdom promised for those who drink from the water of life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you all so much for spending this time together with me and God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.